to talking about air systems. Richard talked about air systems from uh, troubleshooting problems uh, and how your air system works. I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to talk about air systems from preventing problems and fixing them once you have them. Okay, so just a little different approach, but some of the stuff he talked about is going to wind through what I'm going to talk about today. <clears throat> the air system on your coach is the most neglected system on your, everybody's coach. Nobody in here spends the amount of time on their air system that they should. That's why we, that's why we got water in our tanks. That's why we got uh, air leaks. I mean, it's not water. Well, it's why a lot of coaches have air leaks and they never get fixed. I was at Newell. There were two coaches, price tag over a million dollars. Both of them, their air compressors were running, uh, cycling on and off in less than one minute. The no what's the number one enemy of the air system? Water. Water. Absolutely. And the reason is you, you can't compress water. It's going to clog your components, and they're not going to work. It's going to cause rust, and now that debris is going to go through them solenoids and valves and everything, and stuff ain't going to work. Uh, in cold weather, if you travel in cold weather, you're going to make it worse. It, never, it doesn't get better in cold weather. Now we'll talk about keep a, how do you keep water out of your air system. For the ZF chassis, my understanding is you only have four air tanks. Is that right? Yep. That's right? Sterile tag. Sterile tag chassis. Sterile tag, tag ZF chassis. chassis. Yeah. You only got four air tanks. If you have a uh, pre-ZF, you've got 10 or 11 air tanks. Two of them are easily accessible, eight or nine of them are. Not all coaches have a air tank in R1, which is the first compartment on the right side. My coach does, and I think a lot of other people do, but some don't. If you do, if you don't have one in that compartment, uh, then you'll have 10. Vinny, uh, tell them what uh, happens if you don't drain. If you don't drain the air tank in R1, what, what happens? About two and a half gallons drain from my R1 air tank. That's a three gallon air tank. No we got about two and a half gallons. <clears throat> Vinny just got the coach, so I'm not trying to point Vinny out as a bad guy. Uh, he just got the coach. Uh, you drain that tank, if you have it, you drain that tank once a week. If you drain it once a week and you still get water, now I'm not talking mist, I'm talking water. If you get water, then shorten your interval. Go to four days until you're not getting water out of that tank because your 110 air compressor, when the engine's not running, is supplying that tank. So when you're sitting for a month, it's only getting air from your 110 compressor. And there's no air dryer other than that little air dryer that's about that tall. And it, it doesn't do the job normally. So make sure if you have that air tank, it's on your list. You said they are one. Okay, here's the way Newell, a lot of people don't know this. Here's the way Newell uh, <clears throat> numbers your compartments. You got, you got X amount of, of compartments on the left side. At the front of your coach is L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That way there's no misunderstanding because you may have more compartments, you may have less compartments than I do. So when I say R1, it's the very first 
compartment that you can open on the right side. Okay, if I said R5, it would be the fifth back on my coach. It might, what I'm going to get may be R4 on your coach. And that's sitting in the driver's seat looking forward. No, that's, for, for that's standing ride. in front of the coach. Oh, in front. R1. No, not front, on the side. Looking okay. at the right side. Okay. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, Just however clear. many you got. That's how Newell. Yeah. Just to be clear, R is the passenger side. R is right side. Sitting the passenger side. side. Yeah. Passenger side. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm a race car guy. Yeah. Passenger side was always the right side. Okay, so we've covered that tank. We got that one dry. Now we're, the next most important tank is your supply tank, and it's the one that Richard talked about. It's in the right, right rear wheel well on the front, front wall in front of the right drive tire. Uh, that one can be, if you have a 12 volt system, and not everybody does because as the coach has got more slides, the 12 volt pump wouldn't keep up. That's when they went to the two 110s. But if you have a 12 volt, <coughs> volt pump, then you have a, a system that's isolated with a check valve. Remember the check valve they talked about by the tank and that? That's going to give you some advantages to find it when you start finding air leaks because you got a closed system. The only thing you got to do is take your your coach supply, not the 12 volt pump. Leave the 12 volt pump on, turn the 110 off, and drain your air system. Everything will drain out except for that 12 volt part because that check valve will hold the air in. And then you have a closed system, then you're only checking that. Okay. If you find water, my suggestion is that you, you drain that tank once a month. It'll get less water, my experience, than that front tank. All of this can change if you live in Arizona or you live in, a, in the southern part of the humid country. Okay, so that's why sometimes you have to adjust. If you get water, decrease your, how often you check. So you got one, one week at the most, up in the left, up in the R1, now you come back to the wheel well, that's once a month. Now that tank is gonna be fed uh, by either your 12 volt pump, if you have your 110 off while you're setting, or it can be fed by your, your 110 pump. And neither one of those go through the main air dryer. Only when the engine is running does it get air that comes through the air dryer. That's why you tend to get more water in the front one and the one in the wheel one. All the other tanks, the eight or nine other tanks, are going to be under your coach. You've got, under your coach, you've got one, two, three, four up front, and you've got one, two, three, four, five and back. Okay? The one that's, chances are you're going to have the most air in under the coach is the, the big supply tank. It looks, it's almost as big as a, uh, a bright tank that's up front. Almost, it's painted black and it's cylindrical. Uh, mine has an automatic drain on it. But, but I go up and I purge it myself to make sure it doesn't have water in it. If you're getting water, when you check your tanks <laughs> underneath, or somebody else is checking your tank underneath, if you get any water out, and I'm not talking a mist, just a slight mist, I'm talking water. 
and, and I'm not talking three gallons of water, I'm talking water. If you get water out of those tanks, your air dryer needs to be changed. You need to change the filter on your air dryer. I change my air dryer once a year. If I got water out of those tanks, I'd change it immediately. You do not want water. Do whatever, put a $35 filter on your coach before you say, I don't want to do that and I'll, I'll pay the consequences of the water. It'll be far more than $35. The air dryer is in the left, it's in the back wall behind the tag on the left side or the driver's side. Okay, it sits up, there's a big desiccant filter that sits on top, costs about $35. Uh, looks like a giant oil filter. You can remove that with a strap wrench. Uh, that's the best way I have found to remove it. You do not have to drain the air. There's no pressure on that filter. Uh, take it off. You're going to see some gray goo around the surface of where you took it off. Clean that out. I just take my hand and a paper towel and kind of clean that out. Clean the surface. Take your new filter, put a little oil on the uh, sealing surface, and you put that filter back on hand tight. Don't don't wrench it on. It gets tighter as time goes on. Why it does that, I haven't got a clue. But don't put it on any, any tighter than hand tight. To make, you can make the tanks easier to drain. And you, you can do it several ways. On some of my, most tanks are going to come with pet cocks. There will be a bung on, on the bottom of the tank and there will be a pet cock in it. And those things are just kind of... These tanks, if you haven't been under your coach, it's hard to reach the pet cock. It's going to be hard to open a pet cock. I put a quarter, quarter turn uh, of valves on a lot of mine just to make it easier. Uh, but that's, a, that's up to you. If you see a bung without a pet cock, a tank without a pet cock, make sure you get one in there. And, and I have heard of people, in fact I found one bung on, my, on, on the tag tank that did not have a uh, uh, pet cock in it. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can put in the lanyard style. I think some of you guys have put in the, the lanyards where you just pull it from outside the coach. The other way you can do it is the way Richard did it, where he took quarter, he took a quarter inch uh, airline and ran uh, from the tank out to the edge of the coach with a quarter turn, and he can do everything without getting, he can drain all his tanks underneath the coach without ever getting underneath it. Okay, I recommend and I do drain my air tanks every time I lube the chassis and I lube the chassis every 5,000 miles. And I travel quite a bit, so I'll do that two, three times a year. 